get it. Yeah. And she said, I'm going to press through. No matter what, I'm going to press through. And I'm going to get and I'm going to touch the hem of that garment. Are we going to do that this morning? Let's press through. No matter what's weighing on us, no matter what we have scheduled for tomorrow for activities, it doesn't matter. We're here today. Let's press through and be like that woman. No matter what, I want to praise Him. And I want to give Him my everything this morning. Just reach out and touch Him this morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
given. And it's not just the soldier being died on the battlefield, but it's the families of those soldiers that died, given their all for us. And I'm so thankful and honored to be in America. Amen. To be in the land of the free because of those brave men and women who gave all for us. And I am thankful for that. Thankful for the price that was paid for you and I through these men and women. But also, on this Memorial Day weekend, there is an army of the Lord. Amen. There are many that has died in the battle. Amen. has been faithful in the battle of the work of the Lord. Those who have given their life. I think the uh, missionary that I heard of, I can't remember if it was Livingston or not, but this particular missionary given his life, given his wife both, given their life to missions, to the mission field. And their time of serving on the mission field. Um, he lost his life. They killed him. Those that he were, was ministering to, that tribe that he was endeavoring to win to the Lord. They took his life. And his wife did not return home. His wife stayed there on the mission field. And after many years of faithful ministry, she won the very ones who killed her husband. She won them to the Lord. And what faith service it took to do such a thing as that. I, I love traveling with Brother Hanks. And he's just great to be around also, to sit there at the breakfast table morning after morning, he just shared with us one after another, and I would just feed him a little bit to get the whole story. I would remember far some stories. So what about this story? What about that story? And we did that all week, every morning at breakfast. And he would sit there through tears in his eyes and goosebumps on his arms, telling me stories of great men and women of the faith who had been so faithful in their service of the Lord. Some of them didn't make it home. Some of them did not make it back to their physical home. But they did make it to their heavenly home. And I am thankful for those who have paid the price for us. I want us to look this morning in the book of Mark, chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. I'm going to read one, one verse for a text. And we'll come back to the story later in my message. Mark chapter 14, verse 9, for a text. And I, I just want to preach to you a message of entitled Memorial Day. Mark 14, verse 9. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken for a memorial of her. Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Father, we love you today. Thank you for the privilege that we have to gather in the house of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for the privilege that I have to preach the gospel. Lord, as we preach this gospel today, we understand and know that the whole world must hear this gospel. And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they're sent? Father God, when we do the work that you call us to do, when we fulfill the call that you place upon our lives, when we respond to that that you place upon our hearts to do, it's not in vain. Our work and our labor is not in vain. You said that we must be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work for as much as we know that it is not in vain. And I'm thankful, Father, that what we do and what this has been done throughout the ages will be spoken of for memorial of us as well. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you help us and anoint us to be faithful in the purpose in which you called us for. And I pray, Lamb of God, on this Memorial Day weekend, that we would begin to realize and understand the need for setting things in motion, things to be done, things in place, that will leave a memorial of us as well. We ask you to anoint us and speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Speaking here of this young lady and her work, what she had done, said this 
also that she hath done shall be spoken of for memorial of her. Everywhere the gospel is preached. As we've said already, Memorial Day. Memorial Day is less commonly known as Decoration Day. It's the, on the last Monday in May that we celebrate this. Not the day remembering and honoring people who there, there's some confusion. And there's some in the military that in the new age of social media, they'll, they'll be quick. Those who have served, I've seen them do it correct, quick to correct you in how you honor each day to understand the difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day and Flag Day and all, all of the different ones that are set in place. They're there for different reasons. Memorial Day is, is as a holiday that is observed last Monday of May, and it's to serve to, to honor those and remember those people who have died while serving our country. And it's been in place. Memorial Day is considered also the unofficial start of summer vacation. Well, Labor Day marks the end of it in September. And on this day, on Memorial Day weekend, many people will visit cemeteries and memorials and to honor those who have died in military service. And so this morning, as I prepared our bulletin, I usually put, if it's a holiday weekend, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day, or Happy Fourth, or whatever the case may be. And our bulletin header this morning, I put this, honoring Memorial Day. We honor those who serve, who died in that service, who were faithful in the work of the Lord. There's those of you here today under the sound of my voice in this building this morning. You may have loved ones who died while serving this country. Those who uh, underneath that flag went to the battlefield and never came home. I, I'm, I'm thankful that, that my father-in-law, he came home, he served in Vietnam, and, and he came home. He, his life was not lost on that field. But there's those today that, that cannot say that. that their loved ones have left and did not return. But we honor them today. We honor their memory today. We, we remember them and all that they've done, all of their service. And they gave their life for our country. And I am thankful today that we are still free because of that. And some of the most beautiful scenes that you will see will be on weekends, such as this weekend, if you love your country, which I love my country, and I am thankful for, for the flag, the red, white, and blue. And there's nothing greater to me than to see the flag flying in the wind. As I came heading in this morning to Penny Farms, they have uh, set up there the flag parade. Beautiful sight to see as you're coming to that red light there, and to see all those flags there honoring and memorializing all of those who have been faithful in their service to our country. Uh, to see, I watched the video last night of a man standing uh, in the midst of flags blowing. As those flags were blowing, he were, was playing taps. And that, that, that can't help but bring a tear to your eye. And you begin to think about that. To, to watch as our president and his wife went through uh, the cemetery there and began to, the National Cemetery, began to place flags and the markers of those who gave their life for us. I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for our country. I'm thankful to for the red, white, and blue. I'm thankful for our freedom. But we understand that we remember this morning, this weekend, that our freedom did not come without price. It cost men their lives. And I'm thankful for that. And I, I didn't come to, so much today to, to give history on Memorial Day. I just want to honor those men and women for sure today. Uh, your family members and others uh, that have given their life for our country. We, we remember those. Uh, but I want to talk to you about a different kind of Memorial Day this morning. Uh, we find throughout the Word of God that they were faithful men and women who served in the army of the Lord, in the service of the Lord. 
when they heard the call of God, they responded to the call of God. We know as minor prophets. Some we know as major prophets. Uh, some we do not uh, don't hear their name on a regular basis. Uh, but some we've heard much about them. Uh, there was much that they did for the work of the Lord. There was much faithfulness uh, in their service to the kingdom of God. Uh, they hazarded their lives uh, for the gospel. They hazarded their lives for the very purpose uh, that you and I could be here today. Uh, because of what those Old Testament believers did. Uh, and there came a, a lineage that came from that into the New Testament. Uh, and then in the New Testament there was the firstborn of a new creation. His name was Jesus Christ. Uh, giving us access uh, into the things of God. Uh, and not uh, we may not have been born uh, in that Old Testament custom, in that Old Testament uh, Jewish law or rule. Uh, but because of the price that was paid in Calvary, uh, you and I have been grafted in. Uh, but there had to be those that paid the price. Uh, there were 12 men that walked with Jesus. Uh, we know that one of them uh, portrayed, betrayed him, Judas. Uh, but then on the day of Pentecost, they added uh, another to take his place. Uh, and those 12 men History will tell you uh, in the Fox, Fox Book of Orders uh, the price that they paid uh, to make sure that this gospel was carried. Uh, Peter stood up uh, at Cornelius' house uh, in Acts chapter 11 and declared to them, uh, the first time ever done, declared uh, to the Gentiles uh, that the same promise uh, that those Jews uh, received there in Acts chapter 2. He said it was the same promise uh, for the Gentiles. Uh, and he declared before that it was to every generation and all of those that are far off. So we are here today, maybe not Jew by blood, but we've been grafted in and we've been made a part of the household of faith and we've been made a part of the family of God and we have been made soldiers enlisted in the army of the Lord if we're newborn creatures in Christ Jesus, born again, if we've accepted the call of Christ and we too are on our journey home. And they paid that price. They fall those battles. It tells us there in the Fox Book of Waters how each one of them lost their life. Only one of them died of just old age. All of them died as martyrs. All of them died on the battlefield of the service of the Lord. And we want to honor the memory of those disciples, those men and women of faith throughout the Word of God. Not just throughout the Word of God, but throughout the history of the church that was sure to be sure that this Gospel continued. That missionary who has taken that Gospel, that one missionary that is, he stood there uh, and he asked them as he got off the, the boat and he stepped onto the mission field and they asked him why, why he was there and he said, I, I'm here uh, to carry the Gospel uh, to heathens that have never heard the Gospel before. Uh, where do I need to go? They told him, go about a mile uh, that way into the jungle uh, and you will find those that have never heard the name Jesus before. Uh, and that man went into that jungle. He stayed there many years in that jungle carrying that gospel, preaching that gospel. His son died there at a young age. It was through the death of his son that he was able to reach that tribe because they said this as they looked through the woods as he buried his son. They began to look as he weeped and fell on his son's grave and said this, white man cries just like black man. And they came out of that building when he got back to the town they were there sitting in his church. He preached the gospel and their lives was won. But his son died as a soldier on that field. He later died as a soldier on that field. His wife later died as a soldier on that field. Countless stories of men and women of faith who have died to carry this gospel to all generations. And he said, let it be known that this also that they have done shall be spoken for memorial not just just of this lady that we read in our text in Mark 14, but for every man, woman, boy, or girl that's done anything for the kingdom of God, and they died in their service to the Lord. We owe them honor. We owe them honor on this memorial day weekend to say thank God for their service. The Amen. It was paid that you and I could have the liberty to serve and to worship God. There, there is a chapter in the Bible that is set up really as a 
a whole, some have called it a whole faith. You can even call it a memorial wall. It speaks of great men and women of faith. It starts here in Hebrews 11. Let's begin with verse 32. It says, What shall I more say? The time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jacob and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and prisons. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all have obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Before we got to verse 32, we, we read a lot throughout the chapter of now by faith. It speaks of how these men, women, did what they did for God, for the kingdom of God, for the army of the Lord, by faith. We read there just before this that I read to you, it says, by faith. I believe around verse 24 of Hebrews 11. By faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Re refused to do it. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Choosing rather to suffer the afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There's a lot of men and women that have served our country over the years that could just be living the pleasant life. Amy read something to me the other day. She it said, uh, I, well, I went to complain it was hot, uh, but then I remembered it's not 120 degrees. And then I don't have full gear on. And I'm not uh, there on the backside of the desert with full military gear on uh, to know that that price, uh, and then to see that price that is paid for our freedom. Uh, but we also got to understand that we uh, do not sit here today with religious freedom. Uh, we don't sit here today with faith in our heart. Uh, because understand uh, that there were some things that tried to take place uh, in, throughout the history uh, of the Old Testament. Uh, it tried to bring to, to bring to naught uh, the Word of God that men and women of faith uh, kept declaring the Word of God uh, as it has in their lives uh, no matter what it cost them. Uh, we preached about them. Uh, we talked about them. We sing about them. Uh, and they paid that great price uh, to step up uh, and to go by. You think of Gideon that God looked at him. Uh, he was freshly weak, uh, hiding uh, from the Midianites. Uh, and God stepped in there and looked him and said, rise up, you mighty man of power. He did not feel like a mighty man of power, but he went by what God said, and he answered the call, and he stepped out, and he took that army that God left him with, and started out at 32,000, ended up at 300, but yet he went, and he won that battle. Why? Because he knew what God said he was, and he did what God said to do, and what he has done is a memorial when we talk about Gideon, we don't talk about the boy that was hiding, but we talk about the mighty man of power that stepped out and won the victory. When we talk about Moses, we don't talk about the stud 
what they have done, what they have done, what they did, was they stepped out by faith. No matter what it cost them, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Verse 38 says, Of whom the world was not worthy. So the world was not even worthy Amen. of the price that they paid that they may receive the gospel. Amen. The world was full of those that are heathen that choose, choose to live a sinful life, choose to point their finger at God and say, I don't need you. But yet, men and women of faith continue to carry that gospel and pass it their lives and pay that price and do whatever it took to make sure that that gospel was carried. When nobody else cared, they cared. When nobody else was willing to live, they were willing to die. They were willing to do whatever it took to pay that price. And today, this weekend, it's not just a memorial day for our soldiers, but it's a memorial day for those great men and women of faith who paid that price. And you and I can still today stand for religious freedom and say, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And the price has been paid for me. And I am free from this world of sin. Listen, we live in the freest country in all the world. But it does not matter if you're in the, the, the deep, dark deserts, in the jungles of Cuba today, wherever they may be, the one who is born again can declare just as an American can, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And it's carried to those places because of men and women of faith who deserve honor today to know that they paid a great price that we can have this gospel. And to understand something about these men and women of faith. Not only did God honor them, these Old Testament believers, in Hebrews 11. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, He said, i got a place for them in heaven. And they were just the beginning. They were the ones that just started this group. We read about Hebrews 12 and 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I believe that every one was listed there in Hebrews 11 <coughs> makes up that cloud of witnesses in Hebrews 12. And I believe that Paul has joined that cloud of witnesses. And I believe that every one of those disciples have joined that cloud of witnesses. And all of those believers that have served from the book of Acts, even until now, as we still live out the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, those great men and women of faith, and, and, and you can begin to think of some that impacted your life, uh, that they have joined uh, that cloud of witness. Uh, and understand that he's saying, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, uh, and let us run with patience uh, the race uh, that is set before us. Uh, what does this mean? It's not just uh, having a memory of them, but knowing uh, that because they did it. We can do it. Amen. Because they held true to God. What they did for the kingdom of God, we can do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Because the power of God was in their life is readily available to whosoever will. That this gospel, he said, wherever this gospel was preached, it will be a memorial of what she has done. Everywhere the gospel was preached, a memorial of what they have done. And we can understand, this is just something that lets us to know we've got to lay everything aside and let nothing hinder us and run the race with patience and set before us with Jesus Christ leading us. And understand, church, there's something that's got to be done. Moses has a memorial of him. Joseph uh, has a memorial of him. Paul uh, has a memorial of him. Peter's memorial is this. As you read it in the box, the book of Martyrs, is this. That as they're leading Peter in to be crucified, it is said that he saw Jesus. And he asked Jesus, Jesus, what are you doing here? He said, I come to be crucified again. 
Because when Peter was being crucified, it was just as if they had crucified Jesus again. As Peter approached that cross, and they were ready to hang him on the cross just as they did Jesus. He refused. He refused to be crucified in the same fashion. He said, turn me upside down. He said, I'm not worthy to be crucified with my Lord and Lord. So they did that. They crucified him upside down. What history tells. These men paid that price, went to their death, and now he's in that cloud of witnesses. And he's letting us know uh, that message that they preached uh, when 3,000 souls were saved, that message that they carried, that gospel uh, that they carried throughout the New Testament when souls were being added to the church uh, and the church was blooming and growing and blossoming. Uh, it's the same gospel that is being delivered today. Uh, and if we'll lay aside the weights and the sins uh, and know that well, there's anything that besets us, uh, that there's something to be done, there's a race to be ran. Yeah. There's a battle to be won. There's a fight to be fought. And all of these men and women of faith, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they've done that. But Jesus speaks specifically, and we talked about it in our text, of one lady that said in our text, everywhere the gospel is preached, what she has done, what she has done will be a memorial unto her. What was that wonderful thing that she did? that would expand, grow that far. Who was this great woman of faith? She was not a well-liked woman. She was not a well-respected woman. She was not even a woman who was invited into the religious circles. We read verse 3 of Mark 14 about her. It says, Being in bed in the house of Simon the leper, they sat at meat, and there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of it. Spike knife, very precious. She broke the box and poured it on his head. There were some that had indication within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and had been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath brought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But ye have not me, me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. Did you get that? She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken for memorial of her. Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached. Understanding the preaching of the gospel tells us that he came as a sinless man, born of a virgin, lived 33 and a half years, was taken was beaten, was crucified, was dead, placed in a grave, three days, pronounced dead. But on the third day, he rose. Amen. He appeared unto them, now at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I. And he said here in verse 8, she had done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burial. There was many, even his disciples did not understand what he was saying to them when he said, they'll destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up again. We've talked about Joseph and Nicodemus, how they prepared his body after the death. But she anointed him before, before he was taken in the palace hall, before he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. But all of those that were there, all of those religious people that were there did not get it. It was this one that they considered a harlot. It was this one that they considered not even worthy to be there. It was this one who they didn't even think anything of. And when they thought it was a waste, and as she did it, he said, it's not a waste. She's anointed me. She, did, she has done what she could. There was a lot of things that she was not able to do. There was a lot of things that she was not allowed to do. But this she knew that she could do. Why? Because it was her alabaster box. It was her oil. It belonged to her. Nobody could tell her what she could do with her alabaster. So she did what she could do. So 
many times we focus on what we cannot do. We begin to think, well, I am not important to the kingdom of God because I can't preach, or I can't sing, or I can't play an instrument, or I can't do these things. I, I can't do this, and I can't do that. Uh, this woman did not in this moment, uh, as she felt the need to go uh, into that place, uh, though they did not want her there, uh, she knew she needed to be there. Uh, though they did not give her access, uh, she found access. Uh, and though nobody else was doing it, uh, she felt the need to take that alabaster box, uh, to break it, uh, and to pour that oil over his head. Uh, she may not have fully understood what she was do it, but she knew she needed to do it. Amen. She didn't understand fully what was going on, but she knew that she needed to do it. And Jesus declared that she has done what she could. I just want to ask you this question because he says later, this also that she has done shall be spoken of a memorial of her. Everywhere the gospel is preached, she's done what she can do. What she has done here is all that she could do. And it will be a memorial of her everywhere the gospel is preached. How about us this morning? How about us? Will there be a memorial of us? Will there be a memory of us? Yes, there will be a memory of us. There will be a memorial of us. And that memorial will be what we have done. But it also will be a memorial of what we have not done. Amen. We've done a lot of things we don't want to talk about. Amen. We've done a lot of things in our past. I don't know about you, but I have. And social media is great. It's wonderful. But I've come across people from my past that I went to school with, that I hung out with, that they want to remind me of the things that I used to do. That I've done before. So I remember you. You're the one that did this. Come with me. How does it know me that did that? And I remember when you did this. And I remember when you did that. And there's these things begin to build up. But I don't want those things to define me. Because there was something that took place one day that changed everything that I've ever done. Though people may remember it has been stamped, paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. To understand that there was something that took place 20 some odd years ago. In an old fashioned altar when I was born again, that, that all those things that came before did not matter, but what was done on that day will set the memorial for me. And what you have done on that day will not be the only thing, but set the wheels in motion. I believe that that day began to set the wheels in motion for something greater. I, I don't believe that what happened there on that day when I was born again I got me a place in the cloud of witnesses. Uh, but the things that's been done in and through ministry over the last 28 years, uh, I believe that one day uh, there's a place for me uh, there in that cloud of witness. Uh, and to understand that what we have done uh, for the kingdom of God uh, is what we're going to be uh, member, remembered by. Uh, I've said this a few weeks ago when I talked about being a friend of God. I wanted to be able to look when they lay me down in that graveyard and when they come by if my kids put anything on that headstone they would put he was a friend of God. That'd be enough for me. How will we be remembered? There's this pizza company that they call Tombstone Pizza. They said what do you want on your tombstone? And that's a good question for us to ask ourselves this morning. Because that's how we'll be remembered. It's usually etched in stone. And, and the reality of that tombstone uh, is whatever's put there. You'll go through uh, the graveyard. You can walk through there today at the church if you'd like. Uh, and you'll see a lot of different age ranges and groups, uh, memories, scriptures, all kinds of things. Uh, and you can learn just a little bit about those people uh, by reading what's there on their headstone. Uh, and when it's all said and done, uh, but what Jesus said about this woman, uh, whenever she's dead and gone, uh, when all everybody is gone, uh, when everybody his presence is gone. He said throughout the ages, everywhere the gospel is preached, what she did today will be a memorial unto her because she's anointed me for what's about to happen.
time. She did a great thing. In some people's eyes, she was not a great person, but she did what she could. So this morning, no matter what you are in somebody else's eyes, if you want there to be a memorial of you, when it's all said and done, and you want to leave a legacy, can I challenge you this morning to do all that you can? Do all that you can for the kingdom of God. Go when He says go. Speak when He says speak. Be whatever He wants you to do. Because there's going to come a day we'll be gone. Our time will pass. It's pointed out that man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. I was talking to my Sunday school class this morning about King Saul. Did you realize the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the Spirit of God, the whole time the King Saul reigned, the Ark of the Covenant was not present? Not only was the Ark not present, they didn't go looking for it. And not only was it not present, they did not go looking for it, they didn't even miss it. All during Saul's reign. No wonder he ended up the way that he ended up. No wonder he became when he became such a big head. With big ego. Thought that he was something when he really wasn't. It cost him his kingdom. His kingdom was taken from him and given to his neighbor, which we know is David. All of this time that he reigned, that that represented the Spirit of God was not present, was not looked for, and was not missed. I told my class this morning, I said, I would hate to know that in the time of my pastor, somebody could look back and say the Spirit of God was not present, the Spirit of God was never sought for, and the Spirit of God was never missed. He just kept operating and functioning. I would hate for that to be my memorial. That's the memorial of King Saul. The memorial of King David is he did whatever it took to get the Ark of the Covenant back. And we understand something about King David. He didn't do it right, do it right the first time, Sister Underwood. Cost the man his life. He was very zealous and very rushy in the fact of trying to get it back, and he did it wrong. And he stepped back and he reevaluated and he restudied it. But ultimately, he brought that Ark of the Covenant to represent the Spirit of God back into the place. And David is known much differently than Saul. But yet, look at David's life. David was a murderer. David was an adulterer. David had some deceptive ways about him. He was a great warrior. He was great for the kingdom of Israel. He was a great king. But he had his faults as well. But what he understood that Saul did not understand was the need for the Spirit of God to be there. And because of that Ark of the Covenant and need in his heart for God, Nathan looked at him and said, in the midst of his sin, after all of his sin, pointed his finger at him and said, You are the man. You are the accused. You are the one. And that David went and repented and surrendered his heart and his life completely back to God. Why? Because the Spirit of God was present. The Spirit of God was needed. And the Spirit of God was desired by this king and by this man of God. To understand that you will do whatever you surround yourself with. She done what she could. And she came beforehand and in the door of the body for the burying. If we understand stand this today, that we'll do what we can, that we too will stand one day with a great memorial to know that we've done all that we know to do. The scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, if you've done all you know to do to stand, when you can't do anything else, when you don't know what else to do, you look at so many, so many stories in the Bible. I think of the prophet who came to the woman who had lost everything. She was getting ready to die. She was focused on what she didn't have. She was focused on the end result. See, we get too focused on the end. It's about over. Even Paul said the time of my departure is at hand. We, we think of that final day, that dreaded day, 
made. Uh, and, and maybe it's here and it's a approach. Uh, and that's where she was at. She said, I don't have anything else. Uh, and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, have you ever been there and just feel like the situation's bad? Uh, and there's nothing that I can do about it. It's over. It's finished. Uh, she said, me and my son's going to eat this meal and we're going to die. Another one. She said, the daddies are coming for my son. She said, I can't do anything about it. So it's fixed to be over. Same answer. The same question was asked to both of those women. What do you have? She said, all I have is a little meal and a little fruit boy. The prophet said, make me a cake and then feed you your son. The other one said, all I have was just a little bit of oil. And that was enough for the prophet to say, get vessels, borrow vessels, none of you. And both of those women, it was enough. Well, because their perspective was changed. And if I could do anything this morning, I want to challenge us to let our perspective change. Let us not look at what we cannot do, what cannot be done, and everything that we've lost and what's running out and, and, and everything that we have come has come to an end uh, and where the devil wants to think, well, this is the end for you. Uh, tap out. But since she did, she's done what she could. Before you tap out, before you quit, before you go AWOL, before you say, I'm done with this, can I ask you this question? Have you done what you could? Have you done everything that you could? Because that's going to be your memorial. Your memorial is going to be in this moment. In this moment, when you feel nobody wants me here, she, she felt, but I've got this alabaster box of oil that I must break and I must pour it over his head. Sounds silly, doesn't it? Sounded silly to them. It sounded like a waste to them. She said, I must do this. That that God has compelled you to do. Have you done it? Oh, it may make them sound silly. It may, that'll never work. That don't mean anything. That could be the very thing. This memorial of how you're remembered. I always thought, Sister Good, because God dealt with me young in ministry. Some of you may remember this. When I first started preaching evangelizing, that God dealt with me to take my shoes off when I preached. And I would always preach in my socks. Went through some socks. <laughs> then he dealt with me one time, just to also take off the socks and shoes. That's just silly, Lord. That, that just, I said, that's silly to do what I did. I took off the socks and shoes. Ugly feet and all. Hairy toes and all. Just preach. And the compelling of that was how beautiful it would be to those who preach the gospel and also take off that shoes for the ground which you stand is holy ground. And I thought, man, I'm going to be like that baseball player that's known as Shoeless Joe Jackson. I'm going to be known as the Shoeless Preacher. My whole life, that's going to be my memorial. The guy, you remember that man's name? Yeah, the one that didn't wear shoes. That'd be the only way anybody would ever remember me is the preacher didn't wear shoes. I thought that'd be my memorial. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God had more in store for me than that. But what we've done, I don't want to know what my memorial will be. There'll be different ones that will remember you for different things, I'm sure, in ministry. But keep doing all you can for everyone you can as much as you can. They didn't appreciate it. Do it for somebody else. They didn't appreciate it. Did God tell you to do it? Keep doing it. She did all that she could. And if we do all that we can, it is not about the recognition that we get here. Amen. He said, everywhere the gospel is preached. Yes. But you know what you've done? You've set another bridge up for the gospel to be carried. This is the legacy sung this morning for the light of God to be shut out to a world that needs it. Help me to rescue someone sinking now with no hope. How can you rescue someone sinking now with no hope if you don't do what you can? You say, I'm not strong enough to pull them out. Have you tried pulling? Amen. Whatever it takes. 
in closing this morning, 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 8. This is what this is all about this morning. You may say it's the most boring message you've ever preached. Whatever thoughts may be going through your head this morning, this is what it's all about. Paul telling Timothy this, pastor telling you this this morning. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. On this Memorial Day weekend, God says, I want to put you to remembrance. That I'll stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of hands. To understand there's something you can do, but you have forgotten what you can do. You say, I don't have anything left. But he said, there's something left in the house. There's something left in the house. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but yet you keep fearing to do what you can do. But of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. She knew what she could do. She took her alabaster box and she marched past all the doubters and all the skeptics. Just go to where you come in and close. She went there for the doubters. She went there for the naysayers. She wasn't there for the skeptics. She wasn't there for the ones that said she's not good enough to even be in His presence. She wasn't there for any of those, but she was there for Jesus. And she was there to break that alabaster box, pour that oil over it. And she did it. He said that this would be a memorial wherever the gospel is preached. This morning, have you brought your alabaster box with you to the house of God? That is most precious to you with all the precious oils that you possess, everything precious that you have. Done all that she could. She had all that she could in her hand. You have all that you can in your hand. You too are going to have to march past all the naysayers, all the doubters, all the ones that says she or he is not holy enough. They don't have any right to be up there. Or to be in that position. Or to be in that place. There's no reason. If they knew. What I know. If they knew. What she's done. If they knew. What he's done. Well the one that I'm bringing. The alabaster box to. Knows everything about me. He knows everything that I've done. Brother Kevin. He knows every fault, every shortcoming, every sin, every failure, every cross word, every dirty word, all the filth, vulgarity that filled my life. But He also knows that one day I said, Father, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Cleanse me of all my sins. And I'll do whatever I can to live the rest of my life in your will and your will. And now I've got to do what I said I would do. Now you've got to do what you said you would do. You have that alabaster box. Critics are always going to be there. Naysayers are always going to be there. Once it says that's wasteful, that don't make any sense. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I looked back and said, I don't understand it. I don't get it either, but I know what God said to me. She marched past all of them. She broke her out of us. And she fulfilled her memorial. She marked her legacy. That that we withhold and that that we do not. Will you be one that one man? They love God. Oh, they, they did everything they did for the kingdom with passion. People talk about you at the viewing of your funeral. You know that? They gather in a place like this. You're in that casket there in front of them. Life has left your body. People sit back there and they, they talk about you. How good you were. And 
some of us, they have a struggle to find all the good things about us. Then they run out and they start talking about all the goofy junk that we did. I don't want people to have to wait until I'm laying up here to have some good memory of what I've done for the kingdom. But I want to leave here today. I, I, I pray that right now that I'm doing something effective for the kingdom of God that will impact the life. That should be a desire of not just preachers, ministers, but every one of us. I want to do everything that I can. Father, help us to do everything that we can. We'll bring our alabaster box. We'll press through whatever we got to press through to get to you. Lord, we want you to anoint us, but at this moment you're telling us to break it and anoint you. You said it'd be a memorial unto her. I want it to be a memorial unto me about everything that we've done. I want to be sure that if everything that I do is a memorial unto me, that I do right in the sight of God. Father, let it be so in each of our lives today.